Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. Uh, this next fly, today's fly, is uh, a subscriber request. Uh, Smicker Flies, who was the 150 subscriber winner of the Delta Wing fly, uh, sent me these hooks here and um, requested uh, that I do uh, some cork collection flies. Uh, if you're not familiar with the cork collection, it's a collection from 1902. Uh, that was put together and debuted in uh, Cork, Ireland. Um, they, because of the cultural importance of uh, salmon and salmon fly tying throughout the 18 to 1900s, um, they commissioned a, a group of flies from each of the 20 fishing districts. Um, I only know what I've read about the Cork collection on the website. Uh, there's a lot more information on it. I will leave the link in the uh, description below. Uh, I really recommend that you check that out. There's a ton of great information in there and a, a whole lot of um, wonderful patterns uh, and um, you know photographs of all the flies. Um, so the fly that we're tying today is the Lemon Ended Gray. Um, this is from the Lismore District and this one um, it's a little bit heavier of a wing than what they list in the picture. Um, but again, you know, my flies, as you know, I, I tie for picture frames. I don't fish them. Um, so I do want this one to be a little bigger, but uh, also this one is being tied on a fly, on a hook that was uh, sent for this purpose. So uh, Dave, I hope I can do it justice, and I really hope you like it, and I hope everybody enjoys the video. So uh, let's get into this. So I'm going to start with um, black thread. We could start with white thread. Um, Actually, why don't we do that? The white thread is because there's yellow uh, floss in the tag. But other than that, we don't need to use white thread. Now, if this were a fishing fly, uh, the white thread would help um, from any black bleeding through the yellow floss. The gut that I'm using, I'm using uh, authentic Spanish silk gut. This is a little bit different. It's a little bit darker. It's kind of like a, a smoke gray color. And I, I recently just um, acquired this, and I really do like the way it looks. It kind of has a little bit more of a older feel to it. Um, I know usually they have like a brownish color to them. I think um, I'm supposed to rub some um, wax on there, and I'm just going to leave it as it is. I like the color that, it, that it's at. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now that we've got that secured to the hook, let's do a few more wraps just because. We're going to take our razor blade and just cut an angle into the gut along the hook shank to create a taper. This is a uh, seal fur body, so it's, it's not crazy important, but Having a smoother taper on your body is a good thing to practice. And go through and just Make sure it's centered under the hook. Now the tag on this is uh, just silver tinsel. I'm actually going to use some silver twist. I just like the way it looks. Now, like in a lot of our my other flies, I always talk about how the tag tip and tag should start. Um, back here by the Barb Valley, but with this fly, it's a little bit different. Uh, a lot of these flies had much smaller tags, 
much smaller tips and tags. Um, and the way it was explained to me um, is roughly two turns of each. So when they say two turns, they're referring to, uh, with floss, when they say two turns, they're referring to two turns of, two turns, uh, tinsel width. So, I'm going to do a little bit more than that, um, but that would be about two turns. I'll probably do two turns of tinsel, and then maybe three turns of floss. But we want the area where the butt is going to start to be just before the hook point. Now, this fly doesn't have a butt, however, uh, that area of the fly um, would be where it would be, and that's where the tail will tie in. So we want to have that tail kind of come off of this right here, where it's where the hook shank is straight. Right as it starts to bend, we want that tail to just flow kind of right off of that. Almost like it's a continuation of the hook shank. So... Let's get the tinsel on there. And just do two turns of that. And then I'm going to take this forward. And just follow this back up to where I'm going to start the, the floss for the tag. Which is roughly about there. In fact, I want to come back a little bit because I'd like to have a little bit more floss on there, just for color. I think that um, just a shade more. There we go. All I did was just come come down the width of two wraps of thread. Okay. And clip that away. floss we're using is some yellow. I'm just using the uh, Oveil from 54 Dean Street. Don't need much of it. And of this I'm going to just strip away two strands. As you can see it's five strands. It was five different strands there. I'm just going to take two out. And the rest I'll just set aside for another fly. Trying to leave as little excuse me, a little bit fuzz on there as possible. When these flies were tied, these were tied for strictly fishing purposes. You know, this wasn't, uh, they weren't designed for 
beauty and having you know every thread wrap perfect and the, the tinsel and floss being immaculate and uh, you know a lot of the ways that I've been kind of showing uh, the flies being these flies are just a little bit less um, nitpicky but I'm gonna be a little picky on my own fly So, you know, if you're planning to fish it, you don't have to worry about the floss being perfectly smooth or worrying about, you know, every thread wrap or anything like that. You can see I'm far ahead of that hook point, but I'm going to go back in a minute. And I'm just going to back up just a little. Back to that point that I want it to be at. That I had said before, just before the hook point. Now for my tail, I've kind of already been flipping through my feathers here. And I'm going to pull my tail right out from in here on the head. Length of this ring. Get the little fuzzy guy out of there. Okay. And now, when that's set on the hook, that should. Kind of drop off and then be somewhat straight now, kind of like this. That looks good. You can see this one's got a little slight bit of a, a curvature in there and you can you can just fix that by messing with it a little bit with your thumbnail. You can take it off the fly and mess with it a little more if you choose, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to just let this one ride. I'm happy with that shape. Now the uh, tail veiling is an Indian Crow feather, but in this case I'm just using Indian Crow Sub. Uh, this is the substitute that was made by Ryan Houston. Um, he might still have some on eBay. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll still leave the uh, information in the link below, and if I'm able to find the eBay listing itself, uh, I'll include that as well. So we're going to strip out right down in the center. So there's only, you know, Maybe uh, a millimeter or two of the ra of the stem, and we're going to try to snip that away. And then once we've snipped it away, I'm going to kink that just a little bit to raise it up off the tail slightly. And then we'll go ahead and tie that in. I'm just using my needle to get underneath that a little bit. OK, 
Okay, and I'll just come forward. And, you know, you can wrap all of this right up underneath it if you like. Um, snip that off. Not really needed. Come on, huh? All right, now the tinsel that I'm using is uh, Uni French, large silver for the ribbing on this one. We're tying this in again on the underside, on the quartering away about, you know, the 4, 30, 5 o'clock position. And we'll wrap that right up. The dubbing that I'm using is Feathers MC's uh, Gray Seal Fur. And for the hackle, we're just gonna uh, we're gonna put the hackle on at the second wrap. <coughs> So that would be about the second wrap of tinsel, so right, somewhere right in about here. Now you can make this body dubbing as thick as you want. Um, I personally don't like it all that thick. Um, I'll maybe taper it a little bit towards the front. But... All right, the gray hackle I'm going to use is uh, just dyed gray saddle from Feathers MC. Oh, these I had one picked out, but it's actually a little thicker than I thought. This one here, yeah, that should be good. That's a good lens. And then we'll just continue dubbing. Those are dinner beeps. Once again, it's uh, dinner time here. The videos always seem to run into dinner time. 
Okay. Looks like enough dubbing. Come through and get our tinsel. Which again, we're doing uh, about five turns. We'll do five and then tie off on uh, the bottom of number six. And then we'll go ahead and wrap our tinsel. Or our Apple. And just like we usually do, we'll just palmer that back as we go. And when we get to that last turn there, I like to back off almost completely so that way I'm tying off the hackle and the tinsel within one to two turns of one another. And we'll clip that away. Clip away the tinsel. A few extra wraps to get all that. And then the throat is going to be yellow uh, rooster hackle also. Now what we want to do is you want to find a hackle that starts about the same length as the throat that you've got, but you don't want it to extend to be too long. So that would be too long. Having it drop down past the hook point, um, in my opinion, is too long. So we'll look for a feather that is a bit narrower. And this would be our feather. So we're going to start close up to the tip. Since this gets rather wide quickly, I want to utilize a little bit of that shorter, the shorter barbs. You know, the amount of hackle that you use, I believe, it's, that's kind of up to you um, how much you're going to put on there, how many wraps. Of course, we're palmering it back as we wrap. It's two.
Okay. And we'll just pull everything back now. Any of these little stragglers that are stray hairs. Take care of them real quick before we tie in our wing. Okay. So now we're going to go over to the wing table and uh, put the wing together and uh, we'll get this thing buttoned up. See you over at the table. Alright, so we're over here at the wing table and this is going to be kind of an easier way of doing this. Um, this is going to be very similar to how Hale did it in his book, which I find myself to be um, pretty much the easiest. So what we're going to do is first, uh, I'm using goose instead of turkey. I feel like this is a little bit softer, um, uh, maybe a little bit easier to work with. Plus, we're not marrying wings, so that kind of helps as well on the uh, ease of it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take pieces from each section of our, of our wings, but with mixed wings, it's backwards from married wings. So the left side of the feather is not the front side. Uh, with mixed wings, the left side is the rear side, and the right side would be the front side. We're following the natural curvature of the feathers on these. This would be uh, what was referred to uh, several months back as the tips down um, kind of way of thinking, I guess. So what we're going to do here is... Was, we're not going to take out very many, um, maybe, you know, let's do five, five of each color. So this is going to be the rear wing. And that's the other thing too, is that it doesn't have to be exact numbers of each one. Um, you know, this will be the front side. Same thing with the golden pheasant. The golden pheasant, uh, I'm going to grab a little bit more of it because this is our, our support feathers. Um, these are what's going to make up the majority of the wing. doing Mary Wings for so long, this is somewhat new to me, so bear with me on that. I'm definitely not the uh, end-all, be-all when it comes to this. <clears throat> this will give you a really good idea of um, how to achieve that that nice married wing though. Um, left side, rear side. Yeah, I had it right. Okay. And then the guinea hen. When they refer to guinea hen in a wing pattern, uh, or in an actual wing, not as a side, a lot of times they're referring to guinea hen tail. Um, the tail is, is a little bit thinner of a rachis on it. 
it's a little bit softer and as you can see the color pattern on it is a little bit different than uh, some other guinea hens so that's what uh, that's what they refer to oftentimes so if you have yourself a skin um, you'll be in good shape though skins don't have an awful lot of the feathers on there and the feathers aren't very big so it's definitely one of the shorter materials on the wing now I'm tying this fly on a size 2.0 on a fly that's typically probably a size 2 or 4 so there is that also um, being that it you know I'm trying to do this to a much smaller fly or a much larger hook rather what's supposed to be a much smaller fly all right now as far as the golden pheasant uh, for the underwing we're going to actually tie that on separate uh, we're going to tie that on first and then put the wing over the top of it um, and kind of, from what I understand, you can do it either way. That's how it's easiest for me. I like to be able to try to show some of that underwing um, in there, and I feel like if I mix it in, it's just going to get lost. So <clears throat> we will uh, just strip down the sides on these and get it so your golden pheasant uh, tippet looks like that, and then I'll show you what to do with that when we're back at the vise. Okay, so the wood duck. The wood duck also, um, you can add that into the wing as well, but I wanted it to be as even as possible on both sides. So again, that's going to get put onto the wing um, after we put the wing on the fly itself. So what we do with the wood duck though is trim off the fuzz off the bottom, like we usually do with other married wing flies. And Get a section of the longer wood duck that's going to line up on the fly. Because in this instruction, the wood duck should be the length of the wing. So you want to have the longest wood duck possible. So I've already gone through and cut off the strips that I'm going to use. And I've got those set aside. And those will be over at the vise as well. Same thing with the bronze mallard. I've already cut those off as well. It's the same way that uh, we prepare bronze mallard for other flies. We get all the um, fuzz off the bottom and then select out the slips that we want to use. Alright, now for the main wing itself. Um, we're going to separate these colors out into piles. You can put as little or as few in each pile as you like. We have two or three piles. Three I think is a, is a good number to have. Three to five if you want to spend the time on, a, on five piles. For video's sake I'll just do three. I think when I did my pop-em fly I did um, 10 piles, maybe. Hmm. Now, when you're making your piles, you want to make sure the tips are the same. Keep them even and keep them all curved in the same direction. As long as you keep them all curved in the same direction and you keep the tips lined up, you'll be in good shape. They'll all stay orientated the way they should on the fly. Now you're going to take the golden pheasant, same thing, and just Break these up over your piles as well.
same over here. The more even you make your piles, the more mixed it will be. Fix that in just a minute. This is perhaps the hard part, is keeping them all orientated properly, so they're all staying in the same direction. All right, now you're going to take all your piles, get them all nice and close and packed together, individually, And then you're going to take your piles, one at a time, and slowly stack them on top of one another. And when you stack them, again, keep, keep the curvature the same. And try to lengthen the top stack just a little bit to create a taper in the fibers. As you can see here, I've got a little bit of a taper going. And same with these. Now we've got the guinea hen, which I'm going to take and put a couple of sprigs of it on the inside right here. Put a couple right there. I'm actually going to move them just a little bit so that way the, the tie-in point is going to be somewhere right about here. I can actually measure up on the hook here. So with the tie-in point being about back here, you can line these up right there on that spot. And that way they're noticed when we brush them in. <clears throat> Again, same thing over here. Okay, well now we've, I feel like this one might be a little thin, so I want to add a couple more pieces to it.
All right. We're gonna add a little bit, a couple more pieces when we get over to the vise as well. But now, we are going to take these two. This is our near pile. This is the pile that we're going to see the most, uh, the viewing side of when we're tying. So we're gonna take this one and set it on top of this one, creating one large pile. And here we have our mixed wing, ready to get tied onto the fly, which we will then brush out and shape. And um, so let's uh, let's get back over to the fly, get this tied on, and um, hopefully we get uh, a really nice result out of it. All right, now that we've got the wing together, I'm gonna go up here and just separate these a little bit. We'll get our underwing in there. We need a nice, nice flat spot for our underwing to sit. So the underwing it says tip it in strips. Tip it in strands rather. So what we're gonna do is separate out our tippets. So we're going to grab about that much from each side and we're going to take it and strip it off so you've got these little the skin from the rachis. Set that one aside. Same thing on the other side. About the same. Pinch these and keep them together so they don't move and then pull those off. That'll keep all your tips lined up. Now you're gonna take those from both sides and very carefully lay them back to back. And if you do it carefully, you can see I've got the tips lined up here still. I'm going to have to do this away from the camera, but... Lay one flat in your hand, and then you can place the other over the top of it. With a set of tweezers. Get the bars lined up. And then once you've got them lined up like so, you can hold them into place in one finger and stroke them with the other to get them lined up again. Then hold it with the other hand to get the other end lined up. That way they don't move. Yes, they're going to be, they can get a little bit disheveled very, very quickly. So you want to be a little bit careful with that. And we're going to we're going to line these up so that way the tip of the uh, golden pheasant is lining up with the butt, or where the butt would be. <clears throat> Loose wrap over them. Build up a little bit. 
and come back over the hackle a little. And the wax on there as well. What's happening is the throat was pushing up on the uh, golden pheasant too much. So to combat that, the best way to do that is to build up kind of a base for it to sit on. And hopefully I can keep these straight. Or straight enough I should say. Try again. And just wrap and draw it down. Okay, now we'll get the wing. We're going to take the wing that we've created. And set it down over the top of well, I see an immediate issue. Which we'll, uh, I'll address here in a minute if I can. Set this right up on here like that. And we'll do one loose wrap, and just like with the married wings, kind of let the thread fold it down a little. We don't want to let it slide though. You don't want any of the fibers to slide on you. I'm applying the same technique as I do with married wings. A little bit of pressure and as it rolls, I just pull it back a little bit. Now some of these become a bit unruly. Some of them wind up all over. So what we can do is tie in a little bit more golden pheasant to uh, Kind of help keep everything in place. So what we'll do is I'll just grab a couple more slips here. Alright, now I've got my slips here. 
a back side and a front side. And I'm just going to tie them on separate. So I'll tie this one on to the front side, just a loose wrap. And then the other, I'll tie to the back. Now the wood duck is tied on its, it says to have the, the wood duck as sides, the length of the wing. So we'll take the wood duck from the left side slip, just like everything else, and we'll lay it right over the wing like this, the full length. And then I'm going to do the same to the back side. And then the last piece is the bronze mallard. Bronze mallard pieces. Uh, there they go. Okay, so the bronze mallard is the same thing. You just take slips from both sides of the feather, one from each side. We're going to take the bronze mallard slips. Now, the left side one, this would normally go on the front. We're going to take this and straighten it out, kind of like you do with spay wings. And by, this would be the natural curvature to it. But by straightening it out, it actually curves the opposite way. And we're going to do that with both front and back. And then lay those on right over the wood duck. And that'll be also the same length as the wing. That one you want to try to get it to ride along the top of the wing as close to the top of the wing as you can. And again, a loose wrap. Next, that dropped a little. And it's like the front. Alright, so what I'm going to do next here is cut away some of this front just so it's out of the way. And I'm going to leave the wood duck attached to the rackus. Okay, now we don't have all that stuff in the way. I'm 
And then the brown mallet on this side here. Now we'll trim away the stump ends of those. And then trim away some of the stumps on the front. This may look a little not right now. And we'll brush it out here in just a minute, and that should make a whole world of difference. First, a little bit of Sally Hansen's to hold it all in the, into place and let it all kind of soak in. Let it get into everything and keep it all together. Kind of a lot, but you don't want any of this coming apart. And I found that mixed wings, in a sense, can act a lot like a um, bucktail hair fly, hair wing fly. If it's not, um, if you don't use adhesive, it'll it'll pull out and come out in strands and parts, and um, <clears throat> winds up not looking great. So we're going to let all that sit in there for a few minutes, and then we'll come back, we'll finish the head. And then we'll uh, get the horns on and brush this out. All right, so that's had some time to dry. Now, the recipe actually calls for blue swan to be the horns, um, which in the water, I imagine that would offer some movement. But just because... Um, I think it looks a little bit better. I'm going to use uh, macaw tail. So I'm just going to pull out some, a couple of blue and gold macaw pieces. And these, you're going to set these just like we do with other um, wing flies, with the blue stripe on the top and the yellow on the bottom like this. And I'm going to lay them farther back um, so that way they are straighter off the back of the fly. We're likely going to get brushed into the wing. And then a fresh razor blade to shape the head. That's not the fresh one. That's not a good one either. Evidently I need a new box of blades. There it is. Take your time with this. You don't want to cut your gut. At this point the gut should have hardened. Um, but you can still cut it.
And then we're just going to add a little bit of wax to the thread. And then we can do a whip finish. All right, so now we've come to the part where we get this uh, wing shaped properly. So you can do a couple of ways. You can use, we're going to finish the head. And I want to do this before I throw varnish on it. So now we'll just take a brush. This is just a, a beard and mustache type brush. And we're just going to brush that gently through the wing. And I'm just using my finger on the other side as like just a back and uh, kind of like a backer board almost. Oh, moment. And it's... So, that happens. And I guess my head just got a little bigger. Not a big deal. So we'll get that back on there. I'll just leave the thread. And I'll just use my thumb here to kind of rise that up a little bit. And now back to the brush. And all you're doing is just brushing through the wing. And that kind of helps separate the fibers. Now as you can see, we're already getting that look that we want, but my taper is a little bit off. And now we'll brush the other side. As you can see, we've got that nice mixed wing that we were looking for. The horns, as I said, that kind of got mixed in. So now we can pull those back out. Now that I've seen where they're going to sit, I'm going to 
move these just a little bit. Change the angle on them so they're up a little higher. And here we go. Here's our mixed twang. A little bit of preening, and uh, you, know, you can make some adjustments however you see fit. But if it's going to be a fishing fly, the preening is really not all that necessary. We'll go through and just fix a couple of things. That looks good. Now you can use your needle too if you like and just needle through it. You don't get the degree of separation you do with the brush. Um, the brush really helps separate them fibers. Those fibers, excuse me. really helps get that nice look. I will be doing more mixed wings, so hopefully I'll become a little bit better at it. I'm pretty happy so far with what I've accomplished. Um, Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do another whip finish here. And then we're going to go ahead and add a coat of Salire Clear. I've learned my lesson of adding black first. And while that dries, we can go through and just kind of make a few other little adjustments. This tail is this tail veiling has been bothering me a little bit. So we'll just take that. But as you can see that by, by brushing it. We've wound up separating the wood duck, and we've separated the wood, the uh, bronze mallard, and kind of incorporated it all. It's all mixed well right into the wing. Uh, this is pretty much the. Uh, this is exactly what I was looking for. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with this result, and I uh, hope you guys are too. If you guys really enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of it. If you want to see some more mixed wing flies, uh, leave me some pattern ideas. I'd be happy to try them out. I'm really uh, kind of enjoying this this part of the journey. Um, otherwise, I'll just uh, I'll select a few more from the core collection, and I will get to those soon. Um, if you've got any other tips on mixed wings, um, leave them in the comments section. Shoot me a message uh, on Messenger. I'd be interested to figure out different ways of uh, doing it. Um, hopefully, this has helped a lot of you. And uh, if you guys know anybody that's interested in fly tying, that's interested in salmon flies, uh, send them over to the channel. Have them check it out. Um, it's pretty neat. It's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, it's a dying art that I'd like to see a lot more people get into. So, uh, you know, send them over. That being said, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have yourselves a wonderful night and a great rest of your weekend. And um, I will talk to you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful night.